Thousands of neo-Nazis from across Europe are gathering for a rally tomorrow in Dresden in what used to be East Germany. Economic turmoil in the East has given new life to a time-tested creed of hatred. Tom Fenton reports. At night, the streets of Dresden belong to them. Neo-Nazis, armed with clubs, knives, and hatred in their hearts. They're the foot soldiers of a shadowy army that is gaining new recruits at an alarming rate. Their mission, to rid Germany of foreigners, Jews, and other undesirables. Police say there are now 15,000 in eastern Germany. Germany faces severe problems as the once communist East makes the painful transition to capitalism. But one problem overshadows all others in its potential for future violence. Neo-Nazi sentiment always existed in the East, but under the communist regime, it was repressed. Since reunification, it has come to the surface. But if the public in towns like Dresden disapproves, a surprising number are openly sympathetic. Hitler was right in many ways, this man says. If he was with us, the things that go on today wouldn't happen. Things like drugs and pornography are the targets of a campaign launched by neo-Nazi leader Rainer Sontag. After he was gunned down by mobsters in Dresden, his followers carried on the crusade, firebombing this sex shop. Dresden has to stay clean, this young man says. It's not going to be a whorehouse. The neo-Nazis are also intent on ridding Germany of the growing number of foreign immigrants. The movement attracts the young with few job prospects and an inability to deal with changes in the new Germany. They're easy prey to a network of behind-the-scenes leaders who supply the money and ideology. We want to draw older people into our ranks, this man says. We want to build a Fourth Reich and put Germany first. Despite the regret for Germany's past crimes, routinely expressed by Chancellor Kohl, who later wreathed this week at Buchenwald concentration camp, Germany's leaders apparently fail to see the new danger. They are doing little to prevent it. Nor are the police, who just drive past the memorial to Sontag, which has been here for two weeks, displaying Hitler propaganda in flagrant violation of Germany's anti-Nazi laws. The informal shrine in Dresden has become a mecca for neo-Nazis from all over Germany who come to pay homage to the cause and its new martyr. <laughs> the refrain of the 1930s music says, Germany, wake up. But the wrong people are listening. Tom Fenton, CBS News, Berlin. Hate propaganda is not limited to old recordings or to Germany. In this country, high-tech hate is as close as your television set. Rita Braver reports. Yes, we'll rally round the flag, boys. We'll rally once again. Hello and welcome to Ireland. Welcome to Hate TV. Communist baggage. Uh, watch out. It's a new and alarming television trend. Programs that preach a message of bigotry, now playing on public access channels in at least 24 American cities, according to a new study by the Anti-Defamation League. Be aware that in your home, every day, every night, hate is being sold, and your children may be seduced to hate. The other Israel spreads anti-Semitism. In three of the major treatises of the Talmud are found extensive passages which give legal endorsement to seduce and marry three-year-old baby girls. Race and reason promotes white supremacy. Start gassing all these niggers and get rid of them because there's no need to keep paying taxes on their worthless lives. Tom Metzger is the most prolific producer of hate TV. We provide a platform for people who may or may not like other people of other races to say what they want to say. In other words, complete, total, uncensored free speech. Medsker and other purveyors of TV hate are taking advantage of a federal policy designed to open the airwaves. Under the law, local governments can require cable companies to operate public access channels. But those channels must be open to any program any local citizen wants to sponsor. There's not a cable operator in the country who, given the choice, would put this stuff on. Uh, this is a misuse 
of public access channels. But producers of mainstream public access programs are reluctant to see any censorship. Everybody has a right to express themselves, and where do we draw the line as to what's right and what's wrong? And that's why even people who hate hate TV expect to be seeing a lot more of it. Rita Braver, CBS News, Washington.